In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you more about our two-way communication systems. We'll look at what we mean when we use this term, what tools we use, and what are their advantages and disadvantages. First, what do we mean by a two-way communication system? When we use this term, we refer to a system that allows WFP to contact communities and communities to contact WFP. This system has a number of objectives. First, it can be used to share useful information with communities. For example, we share market price updates or market access information. Then, we use it to answer questions about WFP programs and assistance. And lastly, it can receive feedback from people in the communities where we work. The origins of the MVAM two-way communication system go back to an IDP camp in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Shortly after starting remote data collection, we realized that people in the camp were using the airtime credit incentive they had received to call up the local WFP office and ask about upcoming food distributions. They would also call relatives to get news from home and receive mobile money transfers. By implementing phone surveys, we had also, quite unintentionally, been empowering people in this isolated and vulnerable community. We soon realized that the technologies we used to collect information could be used to share information with people in the camp, making their life a little easier. We soon began working on what would become the two-way communication system. The tools we use for two-way communication are CATI, Computer Assisted Telephone Interviewing, IVR, Interactive Voice Response, Free Basics, which is being piloted in Malawi, and a chatbot that is currently being developed and will be tested in IT. Before setting up a two-way communication system, it's important that you first identify your target audience, such as the general population or beneficiaries. At the same time, you need to identify what information you'll be sharing. You might have some ideas already, but don't forget to test them. Talk with community members and understand what information they actually need. What is the most relevant information that you can provide? Also, talk with your colleagues to assess which information you can share easily. Remember that you're responsible for this information. Second, you need to understand which of the tools is the most appropriate to reach the communities you're working with, on the basis, for example, of phone ownership and literacy rates. Make sure you also take into account your existing data collection system and the type of information you want to share. Note that different tools can be used simultaneously. Third, you need to decide which languages to use and consider how to present the information you want to share clearly in a simple format. Fourth, plan for awareness raising and sensitization. People need to know the phone number to call, the web address, or how to search for your chatbot. Also, consider running some campaigns or sensitization events. Some people might need help in understanding how to use the tools. Finally, create standard operating procedures for staff involved in the process. For all two-way communication systems, it's very important to have in place standard operating procedures. These should include the roles and responsibilities of staff involved in running the system, such as operators, focal points and relative teams for follow-up, etc. A question and answer script and guidelines, such as which questions can be answered directly by the operators and which ones need to be passed on for follow-up. Tasking the relevant teams or focal points for follow-up. Who needs to update the information that's shared and when and what are the sources to be used. What to do in case of urgent questions or emergencies. And finally, protection and privacy considerations. Let's now look at each of the tools used for two-way communication in more detail. First, let's talk about CATI. In several countries, our in-house call centre operators also receive incoming calls and reply to people's questions or follow up on feedback or complaints with the relevant teams. The calls are free of charge. Anyone with access to a basic phone is able to contact the operators. This means it's a good option for setting up a two-way communication system in areas with low literacy levels. Operators log all questions, feedback, complaints in a customer relationship management CRM software. This software facilitates the follow-up process. It helps to compile the caller's information and automates various workflow processes, such as sending questions or feedback to relevant colleagues. Easy, standard questions can be answered by operators during the call. So when would you want to set up a two-way communication using CATI? 
If you already have or are planning to have operators in-house for remote data collection, the same operators can manage both incoming and outgoing calls. However, this system is more expensive than automated tools, as it requires you to hire dedicated full-time operators. The size of the team depends on the volume of outgoing and incoming calls. A CATI-based two-way communication system should not be outsourced to an external service provider due to privacy and protection-related issues. At WFP, we also use IVR for our two-way communication system. In this case, incoming phone calls are received by an IVR system. By pressing the numbers on their phone's keypad, people can navigate through a menu of pre-recorded messages that contain useful information. They can also record feedback or complaints. A history of all received calls is saved in the system. This includes phone numbers, the time of day the call took place, duration of the call, and selections made during the call. This data can also help you understand what information people are interested in accessing. The audio recordings can be downloaded and listened to. The feedback recordings are followed up by the relevant units or departments. Like CATI, anyone with access to a basic phone can contact the IVR two-way communication system. While literacy is not an issue, some sensitization might be needed if communities are not already familiar with IVR. One advantage that IVR has over CATI is that it's available 24-7, and because it's automated, it's cheaper. However, it's also important to mention that IVR still requires a lot of follow-up when it's used for two-way communication. This is particularly necessary if people are able to record messages. Someone in the office must be tasked with listening to the recordings, forwarding questions and feedback to the relevant teams, addressing the questions or feedback, and recontacting the callers. A good way to design a two-way communication system could be to integrate CATI with IVR. In this system, live calls are conducted or received during office hours, and the same process is used via IVR for the rest of the time. The same operators would then be tasked with following up with the IVR calls and receiving incoming calls during the day. To adapt our two-way communication approach to countries with increasing internet-enabled phone penetration and data usage, we have now added free basics websites to the tools. Free Basics is an initiative by Facebook that aims to provide the two-thirds of the world population who do not have internet with basic web access. The websites are available for free with no data charges and include content on things like news, employment, health, education and local information. MVAM launched a Free Basics website in November 2016 in Malawi. On our website, we share the food prices and market information that we collect with our traditional MVAM tools on a weekly basis. The website also has a short surveying tool to get information about the food security situation in their community. The advantages of such a tool are that it's very low cost to set up and maintain. As all internet users in the country where you've set it up can access it, it has the potential to reach millions of people. It can offer a variety of information free of charge to the communities and has multiple ways of displaying information. The different types of survey functions, open-ended questions, multiple choice, etc. mean it can be used to get feedback or run surveys among users. However, there are a number of disadvantages. It's not suitable for low literacy areas, and while it doesn't require a smartphone, it's only accessible from internet-enabled phones. A review of the platform MVAM launched in Malawi is currently ongoing. As well as offering feedback on the functioning of the platform, it'll also give us more insights on how people are using the information. The final two-way communication tool we have recently developed is a chatbot. A chatbot is a computer program designed to simulate conversation with human users. By using chat apps, people can send messages and receive answers, simulating real conversations. As it is API enabled, it can be connected to our food price database. This means users can receive a large amount of information, such as food prices, directly from it. Here's a short video demonstration. The concept of a chatbot conversation is similar to that of SMS conversations, but it is much more flexible. The main reason is that there are no character restrictions for messages. The chatbot also allows you to use multimedia such as voice recordings, geolocation and pictures, allowing you to share different types of information. For this reason, the chatbot is also very good for collecting data. 
Through a chatbot, receiving and disseminating information can happen simultaneously. Some of the downsides of the chatbot are that it's not suitable for low literacy areas and is accessible only from phones with internet access. Also, unlike pre-basics, users have to pay for the data used. We're still testing our chatbot and more information will be available soon. When you're ready to deploy your CATI or IVR two-way communication system, you can follow the instructions that were given earlier in lesson eight on in-house tools. For free basics, a manual and a tutorial will be published soon. For the time being, please contact the MVAM team in Rome for more information. The chatbot will be developed and tested in 2017. Stay tuned for more information. Thank you for watching this video on two-way communication.